How's chicken muffins? What's happening? Live? No, we're not live at five. This is my new show. I'm gonna wait for people to come on and wave for Jackie. It's my Woman Crush Wednesday show. Hi. Let's see if anybody's coming on. <laughs> at least it'll just be me and Jackie, and then I can drop it later. So this is the this is the uh, the, the what's it called? Not the inaugural. This is the um, the the. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's Jackie. What's happening, Jackie? Now you just have to ask to join me. There you go. Okay, Miss Cassie, what's up? Jackie. I said Jackie declined. <laughs> Jackie, you declined. Do it again. Jackie requested view request. Go live with Jackie. Waiting for Jackie. This is so exciting. This is my first show. Jackie! Hi! Hi! <laughs> I don't know how it works. Okay. You Must didn't know how it works? Now I know how it works. It's working. It's working oh, right God. now. Costello. Okay. How first are you? Hi. Good to see I you, miss friend. you. Yeah. Good to see you too. What's happening? You have lipstick on. I know. I'm, you got to light up your joke hole if you're going to do internet shows. You can't just go on no lipstick. No one can tell that you're talking. Is that what happens? That's, that you got to light up. In my now. opinion, you got to light up your joke hole. I'm also wearing my trollop hat. What is you that? This is very good for our show. So you're a trollop wearing red lipstick. It's my new trollop hat. Who doesn't want a trollop hat? <laughs> um, you look gorgeous. Thanks. I'm happy to be here. What, you look we, good. You look good. You. Let's get thank in close. You. It's such a different uh, camera than the one on Zoom. It is? What does it do? Does it make us look? I got one of those lights. Oh, I got a light. You I got a know, light? Maybe I should put that light on. No, I, I seem to be well lit. I think you look gorgeous. I like your red lips. I'm telling you, I haven't seen you wear red lipstick like that before. It's, well, you know, uh, the, the, it's, a, it's a story of how we went into lockdown and I didn't have any lipstick, Sue Costello. And then I realized that I had never purchased lipstick before. Stop it! This is the first time ever on- 30 Women years. Women. You what? 30 years. It turns out if you go to Macy's and buy the rest of the crap that goes on your face, they give you free lipstick. <laughs> and that's, that's how I've always gotten lipstick. Oh, all right, so you've worn it, you just haven't bought it. Right, so I ordered lipstick when we went into lockdown because you got to light it up. You got to light it. if you're going to do online shows, you got to got to make it better, so people can see you talk. And so I ordered lipstick via Amazon, and I ten dollars, ten sticks of lipstick. No, stop it, Jackie. Well, that's you know good what? in the pandemic because we're none of us are making any money. Well, you know what that is? That's too cheap. That's not enough money. Uh, it should have been more expensive. So what it was was every stick had like three swipes in it. Oh. And they all taste like cancer. It was like I had bought the lipstick that you buy for your kid, your four-year-old niece, when she wants to play lipstick. Oh yeah, well, you could, maybe the, the ten for ten dollars might have set you off. Yeah, yeah, that was that was that, that was a sign. It was a sign <laughs> that I. <tried. laughs> but you you got it for free before, so you figure, what the heck? How can how much can lipstick cost? Well, that's that's what. And so now I know that lipstick should be heavy. It should be relatively expensive, yes. and it should taste like nothing. Yes. No, because also that's what happens. You have to buy, like, the good lipstick because when you talk all day and you eat and everything, we eat a lot of lipstick. I mean, if we wanted to get into that, we could probably do It's about being a fucking woman and what it takes. Huh? It's all good. All right. I want to talk about all of it. Oh, somebody's saying get Trixie Matt. Oh, I got Trixie on now, but I don't think it's Matt. Trixie Matt will help you. But that's the other thing. So now we have a whole nother, we have more pressure now, Jackie, because now we're not even on stage. At least on stage, we're far, further away. They can't really see <laughs> Right? We're real close. People are like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so now they can see all of our everything. And now we have to be funny and be attractive. And what else? And I swear to God, I brushed my hair today, but it didn't take. It's, you know, it's an interesting life we lead right now entirely on the, on devices, you know? Yes. So. Well, I'm usually in my pajamas and then I just put my fake eyelashes on and I look like I'm. A million TV. bucks. Like a, <laughs> <that's> awesome. <laughs> I'm wearing, I'm wearing pajama bottoms. <laughs> I've been rolling around terrified all day about what's going on in the country. Freaking out. Oh, uh, well, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know how you could not know that it was going to happen. Like, so. 
and my, my point exactly. It's the it's the the cognitive dissonance on the on the elites part is just as strong as what they accuse the other side of. I mean, how could they? What it, you thought it was just going to be like? I, I'm like, what do you think you were going to dance in the streets and then all of a sudden the Magic Kingdom was going to come? I uh, I've ever every rock in this country has turned over, right? And worm yes. people roam free. Yeah. And so the fact that the worm people weren't going to get super mad and sad, and then of course. The cops and the police let them into the Capitol building so they could loot it, and then they and then they maced them and got them out. And uh, you know, and last last year, you know, they were they were killing people in South Dakota, yeah, who, who were trying to protest the pipeline. But a bunch of whitey magoos, and that's uh, uh, I'm sitting from a whitey magoo place myself. But a yeah. bunch of shitty whitey magoos aren't going to stop other shitty whitey magoos, is what I'm saying. Well, that's funny because in terms, that's what I've been talking a lot about on my suit TV is that we went from the women's movement, then to the Black Lives Matter. And I kept saying it's going to be a, it's going to be a class war is what it's going to be. And I kept saying that the cops saying defunding the cops and the Black Lives Matter fighting, we have a lot more in common than we do not in common. And you just said that by the cops who are helping the guys in. But also what I just tweeted, the elites are not, they keep, whether you agree with anything or not, this is my opinion, is that these people are the working class, right? They're, they're disenfranchised. They feel disrespected for whatever reason. Trump's rhetoric helped it. The, the elites not taking care of them. The Democrats not helping. All of it has caused this combustible, combustible situation. But what they don't pay, the lack of respect of the working class on my end anyways, is that these people are the guys who drive the trucks. The women well, who drive we, the trucks, they, they're in charge of the electricity, they're in charge of your gas, they work for these companies. Like, if they really wanted to organize, they could shut it all down. Yeah, none of the, but the thing is, is the actual Proud Boys, the actual dick in hand uh, fuckwits, yeah. those guys aren't, those guys don't have jobs. They don't? Those guys, they're not the working class. I mean, the working class, what, I mean, I know what you're saying, is that, is that the, the lie that everybody lives is that, they're not poor and they're going to be fabulously rich. And so if you buy into that, you don't want to support the poor because you're not poor yes. and you're going to be rich and they're going to take all of your shit away from you. <laughs> and you're like, or, or you could live right where you are standing. You could live in the moment. I'm in my garage. Uh, the fact that I have a garage means that I've already won. Uh, right. So. And don't you think that as women comics, me and you are totally ready for this shit? I mean, we've been through. Yeah, right? I can't. I, 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 I live my life. You know, I, you know, we've since March, all of my work, I've had to reinvent the, the fucking yeah. wheel, obviously. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So but I've I've spent a good portion of my time, you know, just being being aware that I am not a scientist, so yeah. I cannot fix COVID. Yes. I am not Superman, so yes. I can't fly around and knock heads together. Yes. I am a 55-year-old white woman who yes. can make jokes. That's my jam. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're going to need. That's literally when there's any time to come through, Jackie, well, they're gonna, people are going to need to laugh. I do think that we're going to be able to go out and really, really, like, rip it up. And do you feel like, let me ask you this, do you feel like, uh, I feel like my my performance because I back when I eventually get to go out and perform, I'm going to ab absolutely just rip it. Do you feel like that's happening with you, or do you feel like you're losing well, it? I'm not losing it because I perform three or four times a week on Zoom. Okay, so I'm doing shows every week, and I'm because I was supposed to put an album out last year, and I couldn't. I didn't want to lose it. I didn't want to lose the album. So I had to work on the bits. And now, so I, when we went into lockdown in March, that was my last week on the road was the middle of March. And uh, when we went into lockdown, I had probably an hour of material and 15 minutes of it needed work. Okay. Uh, we so, are let's, so, so let's tell people who don't completely understand, because I'm, I'm finding people love to hear the underneath of what goes on with comedy. They, they watch everybody like be funny. But so you have an hour. So it takes an hour. How long does it take for us to get an hour together of material? Just me? the material, not even making it great. Just an hour. Well, I mean, I've been working on this album for it'll be, it'll be four years. It's because yeah. uh, it came out. I recorded the last album 
I'm not the hero of this story. If people want to go to JackieCation.com uh, and sign up for my email list, that is the best way to find out about my Zoom shows. It is so easy to get off my email list. It's actually harder to get on my email list because you have to find JackieCation.com and then click on that thing. Anyway, so, but, so I had, I had all this, um, I had all this, so I recorded my last album six weeks after the election. Okay. And, and that was the first time I ever did any political material. And what made you do that? Now I'm going to ask you some questions because this is it in my interview show. And I want mm -hmm. people to, yeah. I'm going to ask the questions that I think people would want to know. So what, okay, so will you, will you move to become political after that? Was it like a choice? Did you do it on purpose or did you do it because the crowds wanted it? Oh, I never know what the crowds want. That's always me, Sue. Uh, that's good. I can't. I can't do what the crowds want. Uh, maybe that's why there aren't huge crowds. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> but I will say that um, I've always, like, I've always been political. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've, I'm, a, I'm an active uh, citizen of the United States. It always has have been. Mm -hmm. And um, I... Uh, I have a degree, very old degree in political science uh, that mm -hmm. came by accident mm -hmm. because I had to pick a major uh, in the 80s. So at the University of Wisconsin. But the thing is- That's how I became an actress, by the way. My English teacher asked me if I ever thought be about being a chef when I passed in my first paper. And then, so then I took an acting, like like a, uh, like a acting, like little, uh, you know, side thing that they were doing. It wasn't a class. It was just like a little thing, a little workshop. And I took it and she told me I was good. And I was like, well, you're the only one who said I was good at anything. So I'm going to be an actress. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> so you did political science. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So I've always been political, but I never did political comedy because I was always too mad. I was always too, too mad. mad. I couldn't find the, I couldn't find the jokes, right? I was just, it was all ranty. I mean, and some people can do it well. And it was not me. But um, also, let's talk about when you started, being a woman who's ranting wasn't going to, they weren't going to let you do that. That's the truth, 2020 right? 2020 being a woman ranting. Nobody fucking wants to hear it. Yes. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's like one night I, I was at the improv and I saw Bill Burr and then Eliza Schlesinger go up. Mm -hmm. And they have the same, they both rant. Yeah. And granted, he's been doing it probably 15 years longer than she has. Right. But um, they they would have carried her off stage if it would have been him doing what she, what he what she did. Say because that again. So they, they, uh, if he, he, he did, she did what good. he did. If if she if if he had you if he had done the material that she did, they would have carried her carried him off stage. But because it was her. They did not, they, they got a little, they, they were there because the jokes were good, but mm -hmm. there was a little more of this. There was a little more of, no, oh, yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah. And instead of, woo, which is how they always respond to Bill. Right. When Bill loses his, you know, you know, Bill does, my brother, one of my brothers fucking loves Burr. And Everybody, all my guy friends love Burr. I mean, he is right. funny. We got to give it to him. He is funny. Right. No, he's, he's great. He's a great yeah. comic. But he's just, you're, you're just like, but he's not, you know, it's, um, but my brother, and there's no way this is flattering to Bill Burr, but my brother Russ goes to me on the phone. He goes, he's like that Rickles guy. And I'm like. Rose, uh-oh. Talk about Jackie. Oh, there you go. Go ahead. You froze but for a second was like, Maybe Rickles would have wanted to hear that. Nobody else wants to hear he's that Rickles guy. Nobody wants, my brother is like, he's like Rickles. And I'm like, don't say that. But That's, he's not really Bill like Burr. Rickles, right? Because Rickles had a shtick and he was like purposely filthy. And, and Bill Burr, is, is, I think he's being himself. I think he's a caricature. The, yeah. the, I mean, if we want to discuss Bill Burr's act, let's, let's do it. He's listening. No. Fuck but, it, it's my show. They'll all come at me. They always come at me. They're like, fuck you, don't talk about Bill Burr. Fuck you, don't talk about men's medium. That's the uh, barstool guy. I call him uh, Mr. Men's Medium now. He doesn't even get to have his name. Uh, um, I will say that, um, that, that, no, I just, I, what I would like from Bill Burr, and this is nothing, it's none of my business. It turns mm -hmm. out whatever anybody else does on stage, absolutely none of my business. But were I to be asked, 
Uh, I would want, because Bill Burr does this thing. He's like, I'm a dumb guy. Sometimes I do dumb things. Here's a punchline. Uh, Bill Burr is not a dumb guy. Right. Bill Burr is a smart guy. Right. So I don't know if you've ever seen Chad Daniels. No. But Chad Daniels is an amazing mm -hmm. comic. Oh, I thought you were going to say he was a dumb guy, and that was going to make no. me happy. <laughs> but Chad Daniels' stand-up is, I'm not a dumb guy. Sometimes mm -hmm. I do dumb things. Here's a punchline. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, I like that setup better. And why do you think, okay, so what, what the purpose of me doing this show is because I want to bring the angle of what it's like to be a woman. I want to I want to show, because I'm realizing, like, there's a lot of men who don't see what happens. So there's a there's a level of men that have been, like, abusive and, and bullying and everything. But there's a lot of men that aren't like that. But what I'm noticing is that the men that aren't like that don't see what, what's going on. So it's, a lot of times it looks like the women are crazy or they don't see it because they would never do it. So what I'm trying to do with this show is what I'm going to do with this show is start talking. I'm going to talk to politicians. I'm going to talk to actresses. And we're just going to talk in a positive way. And we're going to talk about experiences. Like I've heard you, I've seen you on Twitter hilariously. Like they don't understand how funny we have to be, the shit that we've taken and how funny we have to be. And I remember I want to, I'm going to ask you to tell a few stories if you don't mind. Okay. I want you to tell the story about the, about the club owner who had the gun on the desk. Oh, that guy. Yeah, what a fucking tell. tool bag, man. And the thing is, this is terrifying <laughs> for men, too, obviously. Yes. Yes. But so there was a club on, it was on Brady Street, and it was owned by, um, like, thugs, right? Like, uh, biker thugs. They weren't, um, <laughs> they weren't, like, mafia guys, mm -hmm. because um, my dad didn't know them. So, and my dad, as a glancing knowledge of sort of organized jackassery in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. And when I say organized jackassery in Milwaukee, we're not talking Chicago. This isn't the, we're not talking New York. It's not the Corleones. It's not mm -hmm. even the Sopranos. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, you know, it's the DeSalvos, whatever. But it's, right. uh, but the, um, so. We used to call them funny book gangsters in Boston. Oh, okay. Funny book gangsters. Funny book gangsters. So anyway, so the, the oh, guy that owns okay. the comedy club uh, on Brady Street, he, um, so he, I, I work there and he's told me he's going to pay me $300 and you got to go in and he's, he's been playing the big shot all week, right? Buying dinners for people, bringing in a lot of, there's prosciutto, things are happening, Costello, things are happening. So, uh, but I go <laughs> they around. always do that in the beginning. They do the flash and then they fuck you from behind. <laughs> right. Come on. He just he just wants to be a big shot, right? He's just yeah. one of these guys who wants to be a big shot. And so I go in to get paid, and he gives me a check, and it's two and a quarter, and it's supposed to be three hundred dollars. But wait a minute, describe the scene. Are you in the okay. office by yeah. yourself with him? Yeah, yeah. No. So I go into the office, mm -hmm. and he's sitting at the desk, and on the desk is a gun a handgun pointed at me just sitting there and you're just like what is that what is that doing there and you know i'm only let's see this has got to be 92 90 yeah so i'm i'm like sort of six years in eight years in but not really because i had to figure out i had to reinvent the fucking wheel anyway so but i'm but i'm not new Right. And I'm working the road enough that I so I look at it and I go, oh, he's trying to get a ride because he's, getting, he's not getting, oh, frozen. getting enough attention. He's not a comic. He's not getting enough attention. So he wants to get a rise out of you. And so I um, I ignore the gun. He gives me the check. It's seventy five dollars light on a three hundred dollar freaking paycheck. And so I say to him, uh, there's, it was $300. You owe me another $75. And he kind of leans back and he puts his hand near the gun. <laughs> and he goes, you think you deserve that? Oh. And I was like, it doesn't matter. That was the agreement. It, I mean, and it was terrifying, obviously, right? I mean, because yeah. you're just like, but... Here's the thing. There's two. There's two ways you handle that. It's not terrifying. It's it's. I mean, it's terrifying. It's humiliating. It's degrading. Well, he's trying to. He's trying to humiliate and degrade. Because there's two ways of, of doing it. You can either humiliate yourself. 
Uh, and or and, and in no case are you you to blame. Like I knew a guy who literally he saw the gun and he was like, "Fuck this." And he got paid light, and he left. Now, that guy never gave him his money and never booked him again. He, my guy, the, when I did it, he paid me the extra $75 and never booked me again. So, it does, it, it, there was no way to win, right? Right. He was just, and, and, and I was just featuring at the time anyway, so he was like, he had thousands of comics that he wanted to give 20, 30 minutes to. So the and point so, of this is that he was just getting off on the fear. He was just getting off on the de de degradation because that's what I keep saying on my show. I keep saying on my show is that it's never about the money. Everybody always says that it's always about the money. I say it's never about the money. In that situation, it wasn't about the money. It's just about being a... Uh, a genius. Yes. Yeah. And, but the, the weird thing is, is that it's always, it, you know, it's, it's, it's always about the fear. And it's never about... You know, you're just like, well, he's, he, you know, he's a guy who just, he likes to slap an ass. And you're like, uh, he's not slapping an ass because he likes to slap asses. He's trying to scare you. Yes. He's trying to intimidate you. He's trying to make it so you don't feel safe. And how many green rooms, Lori and I were talking about this. Is Lori, come on. Lori, come on. Uh, uh, Jackie and Lori do a show together. I'm going to have Lori on here, too. She's another cool. one that's been around forever like us. Yeah, and I mean, but we were talking about how, you know, how there was always only one woman on the show, and it was very much a sort of a herd mentality where they'd cut you off from other, other women and corner you with a pile of dudes. And then you'd sit in a green room and terrible things would be said. And some of the guys who didn't want to have terrible things be said would also kind of flinch and go, oh, fuck. Uh, not, they didn't want to hear it either, but I didn't say anything about it. And they didn't say anything about it, but it was mostly being said for my benefit because I was the only woman in the room. And, and for what like, reason? To humiliate you, right? Right. For the reason to, they're like, you don't, you know, it's essentially not making it. They're like, if you want to do comedy, you got to sit through this shit. And there's two other comics, male comics sitting in the room going, you don't actually, none of us want to sit through this shit. Why are we sitting through this shit? So that's, what I, so that's what I started off the show by saying, that there are men out there who don't do this. That Like right. somebody just wrote a comment. They're like, they hate it being called male to toxic, uh, uh, toxic, toxic male energy. And I understand why the guys are visceral, because they don't understand, they don't get what, 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 they don't know why the women are upset. It's not, we need a commu uh, communication. So that's why I, I'm, I'm loving that you're telling these stories so that people understand. Because they don't understand. A lot of times what I found is that men did not understand that men would hurt their business to hurt women. They couldn't wrap their brain around the fact that they would actually lose money to scare a woman. Like I had a guy one time who, who uh, he hired me. It was, I was doing the Laugh Factory uh, Chicago and I did a side gig on the Friday night. And the guy hired me for the early show and the late show. The early show, I was gonna split the door. The late show, I was getting, no, I'm sorry. The early show, I got a straight fee. The late show, I was getting to split the door. And the girl had told me, Sue, the late show's always packed. So I did the door deal for the late show. Well, I realized the early show started selling up. And I was like, oh, I see what he did. He pushed everybody to the early show. So now I know. And then the guy's all wired on coke running around. I'm in the fucking Chicago by myself. And I realized he's not going to give me my money. I just know in my gut. And I, so what I had to do is I had to stand up to him and ask him for my money before I went on stage. Because the only leverage I had was the show and the, and the audience was coming to see me. Cunt. Not only that, he sat in, in the front row and tried to intimidate me while I was on stage. And that I never understood. I understand all the, even the, the, the terror, but I never understood that he would ruin his own show to do intimidate me. But that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about how absurd it is. I'd like to make a cartoon about it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any, you're just like, well, what, what are you actually getting out of it? And it's, and it's, and it's that weird, it's that power thing that, that, that people do and you're like I you know it's so much real estate in your mind mm -hmm. to have to plan all this to be this crazy ass super villain that is actually <laughs> just a, a shitty person and you're like why don't you just run a business because you like stand-up comedy and you want to mm -hmm. see some stand-up comedy and then and because there's going to be enough drama anyway I mean yeah. think about the clubs that don't I think about the clubs that don't book me 
Mm -hmm. and how much I just want to go, no, that guy's a dick. And, uh, and, and, and he has to deal with someone, because I won't say it to him, because mm -hmm. I live in hope, and I've been sending avails to everybody for at least a dozen years. You are such a hard worker, Jackie. You really are. I send avails, and they haven't booked me in it for six years. I sent avails to Rich uh, Miller at, Comedy in, at uh, the Calf City in Austin. Mm -hmm. And the sixth year, I get an email back from him going, you know I think you're funny, Jackie. And I wanted to go, no, no, I actually don't know that. Uh, here's what I do know, Rich Miller. You know that other people think I'm funny. And you don't want to burn that bridge. He said, but you can't fill the room, so I can't book you. And I was like, and so I took it a moment before I responded to that email, because otherwise I would have just been like, Lies. See, but let, but this is what I want. I want to pause for a second because I want people to understand that the provocation is almost unbearable. <laughs> right? That's how we work every day. The provocation is humanly almost unbearable, and we are masters now of it because we have to deal with it every day to get through the irrational provocation of the male ego. Right? Okay. Or yeah, and, and it's it's so it doesn't make okay. So I I wrote him back and I was like. I, I look at the calendar and your calendar is full of guys that also do not fill the room, my friend. But I will say this is that if you booked me regularly, I might be able to build a following in that market and then I could fill the room. Okay, so and we're gonna stop there again because that's rational business. You have men that aren't filling the room. So it's not rational that you're saying I can't fill the room. I'm willing to go and grow and do the press and do whatever it takes. So why wouldn't you do that? So here's what I was just saying. You're, you're speaking to why wouldn't this guy do good business? So go ahead. Right. And he said, that's an excellent point. I'm going <laughs> to think on it. Well, let me control it. It can't be your point. I'm going to think on it. And then it's going to come back and be my point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, he, yeah. and then for three years, he booked me solid. And because I did not blow the, like, I didn't sell out, he stopped booking me. Um, and I continued to send avails. And the Cap City just closed. But I would send avails to like that. that. I was thinking, oh, oh, they just closed. Like, what? They were so cocky and so arrogant and so fucking ballsy for so long. Now, mm. I know. It's, it's so interesting, though, because... Like you look at at, I mean, there's all there's gonna be enough drama. Yeah. The, there there are people. With the comics, get, the comics are out of their fucking tits. Right, right, and the, mm -hmm. and they're they're gonna be comics who can't not confront you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. If I'm gonna be sane, right? Why don't you thank your fucking lucky star? Right. <laughs> because they're not logical. Right. They're not logical because they're out of their fucking minds with their power hungry little fucking clubs where they're being insane. That's what I mean. They're, they're fucking their own business. Bill Blumenreich. I went to Bill Blumenreich at the Wilbur. I had just headlined the Women's Comedy Festival and uh, sold it out like crazy. They were like, this has never sold out like this before. I'm like, yeah, I'm from Boston, right? Yeah. So I wanted to shoot my special. I've never shot a special in my whole career. I've never done a stand up special ever. I want to shoot it in Boston at the Wilbur. I want to pay. I have guys that are going to film it. They're going to, they, we raise the money. We're going to do, do it, it right? Yourself. So yeah. I call him and I say, Bill, I go, I want to shoot my special there. How, how are we going to do this? He goes, it'll be, and I remember, God rest his soul, Charlie Murphy was still alive at the time. Charlie Murphy helped me. So, okay, it's me. you have to do two shows. It's $9,000 a show and you can't sell any tickets because you won't. What do you mean that you can't sell any tickets? That's what he told me. Well, who was going to sell the tickets? They were? He was probably going to sell them, and he thought I was going to go for that and be like, okay, I'll give you $18,000. <laughs> and then you also get to keep the door? Yes, that's what he was telling me. Huh. But it was like this, this in the dark kind of abuse where it was almost like it, it made me feel like so you, you feel crippled. You're like, I can't even fucking do real business. I can't even pay and, and, do, and make money back. And Charlie Murphy was like, Sue, that's fucking bullshit. And then I remember that was when I first started doing my own thing. I rented out Florian Hall in Dorchester because I was like, fuck you, Bill Bloomerite. She sent me an email. You're a fucking loser. I was like, no, you're a fucking loser. And I rented <laughs> out, I rented out Florian Hall and I got a full page ad in the Globe. 
opposite his ads that he paid. Mine wasn't, a, I didn't have to pay for mine. Mine was a do, do it yourself. Sue Costello's not taking any shit anymore. And I was like, that's what we have to do. That's, that's how we have to live. People have no idea. I mean, Laurie was on Tough Crowd. Have you, did you do Tough Crowd? Yes. Yeah. And so with Tough Crowd, I always say this, that it was a bunch of guys. It was Colin and all his friend, guy friends, right? Mm -hmm. And they were all regular paid regulars. They, were, they had a job, so they had the comfort of the paid regularness, right? And they had the camaraderie because they were together all the time. Mm -hmm. And then every three weeks or something, they would circle one of us in. It's like throwing us to the lines. We didn't have a, the comfort of having a steady job. We didn't have the camaraderie. And it was one woman with four guys who had all that behind them. And I always say any woman who could survive on Tough Crowd who anybody thought was even remotely funny is a fucking badass. Well, I, I, I know that I, I remember how I got that gig. Um, well, someone wants to, we'll, we'll go back to that in case it goes away. The Mitzi Shore question. Okay, go ahead. Do you remember how you got the gig? Let's hear how you got Tough Crowd. Oh, I played cards with Colin one night uh, in Montreal until like five in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I had just stopped drinking and they were just hammered. And I was like... I'm going to soberly sit here and fucking play cards with this guy and try to make him laugh over cards until he knows that I'm funny. And then I get to do this fucking show. And da -da 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 I know. I get it. It's a, it's, it was always weird because I never really, oh, anyway, was somebody on a Mitzi, I don't know Mitzi Shore, but go ahead. What's the Mitzi I Shore? wanted to talk about, so Mitzi Shore, so I was watching a little bit of the Comedy Store documentary. So Mitzi Shore was so lovely to me. She was so, she was just so, she was like Sue Costello, but let me go on all, I mean, the big state, the big room, the small room, everything. And so the, I got invited to her uh, memorial service in LA. And so, uh, so prior to the memorial service in LA, uh, the guy who books the Laugh Factory in, in Las Vegas, he would never let me uh, headline by myself. The first time I went, he made me co-headline, which means I had to do it with a guy. So we would flip flop every night, 17 shows or something, and you flip flop. First the guy, then me, then the guy, then me, then the guy, then me. The first time I do it, Fuck I guess. Fuck Las Vegas. Fuck Las Vegas. With a, with a broomstick up the butt. Fuck <laughs> so I get off stage, and the manager says to me, you should not be co-headlining. You should be headlining, right? And I go, I know. So then I'm, my logical brain goes, oh, the manager who's been here forever is going to tell them I'm going to headline. No. He fucking dicks me around a couple times. It's a long story, but I was in Reno working, and, and, he, uh, and, and you know what else they do what people don't understand is they'll put somebody filthy on before you. Oh, yeah. If you're headlining, they'll put fit somebody filthy on just to fuck with you so you can't be strong to headline. That was going on in Reno. And what was going on is this shift was happening in the world. So the guys were kind of having a different view. And so the guy who was emceeing was like, why, do, why does he have him opening for you? And then he's like, why is that guy co-headlining with you in Vegas? That guy can't follow you. So I started hearing him saying what he was perceiving. And I was like, wait a minute. Then I get to Vegas. And the first night they have me closing both shows. And I go, oh, you know, the good girl in us. Oh, well, probably tomorrow night, he'll probably, you know, get the guy closing, right? I get there the next night, I'm closing both shows. So then I remember the guy up in Reno saying he can't follow me. And I, so I say, uh, so I, uh, I call him. Remember, you know how they have all the, uh, the, the, the articles that how girls are supposed to ask for money, don't be too scary, and la, 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 la. Because that's what they'll say to you. They'll say, why didn't you ask for it? They'll always find the way to blame the victim, Right. Right. So I, so I emailed them. I said, listen, I have no problem closing all the shows, but I need more money for it. You're a bitch. Fuck you. Uh, we'll have him head, headline all the shows. That's what they do, too. Yeah. Instead of just being even Steven and negotiating, now I'm a bitch. Now I'm in uh, Vegas by myself on a Tuesday. I have to work all the way to Sunday. Now I have mm -hmm. the threat of my money going away because this guy. Hold them to their word, right? You hold them to their word. And so... Uh, so I, I headlined all the shows. And then the last night I went out with the, with the uh, PR guy and I go, can you believe that they were making me do all the work and that guy was getting paid the same as me? And the guy goes, I bet you he was getting paid more than you. Oh, yeah. I had a thing go down my chest, Jackie. I was like, it was like, and I said, God, please let me see that guy's check. And I went <laughs> in the green room. I went in the green room and the major D gave me the guy's check. And it was $500 more than I was making. Yep. And guess what I did? I didn't go on the first time because remember how you said you had to pause with the booker? 
You yep. couldn't respond right away because of the provocation? Because mm -hmm. then what happens? The story becomes Jackie Cation's crazy, Sue Costello's crazy, right? So I, I do my act, and it's like I was completely like outside my body. Like it wasn't even, I wasn't even attached to myself. I just, la, 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 la. And then I went upstairs, and I was like, fuck it. I'm going to go down and purposely say it now. And I went down, I got on stage, and I go, I've been doing 17 shows. I go, and these fuckers pay me less than the guy. And the crowd went wild. And I was like, oh, 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 the crowd never knew. We were taking the, the abuse crowd in the know. Huh? Crowd doesn't know. Crowd doesn't know anything. No. They're and then just they just hear us see a show. They're hoping that you're making a living, but they don't know. They don't no. know that you're making a living. And then when I got the support from the crowd, I was like, and then they had the bouncer in the corner, like trying to threaten me, like stand there like this, like trying to get me to shut up. And I was like, I've been thrown out of strip clubs in Canada by my neck. I'm from Boston. <laughs> I'm like, this guy doesn't scare me. <laughs> so then, so then yeah. I go, two days later, I go to Mitzi's, uh, Memorial and the guy who books the laugh and mind you I got the money from the guy. I said fuck you give me the money, right? I mm -hmm. go to Mitzi's funeral the guy he Gives me a hug and introduced me to his wife and I was like these guys don't even care Well, sometimes uh, the weird thing is is like there's this whole energy where if you stand up to them Yeah, they're supposed to respect you right that's what we were all told when we weren't men uh, we weren't men, but we were told, well, if you stand up to him, that's what he wants. He wants you to stand yeah. up to him. And then you do right. stand up to him. And he's like, well, why are you being such a bitch about it? Yeah. And you're like, but I thought you wanted me to stand up for myself. Right. He's like, I want him to stand up for himself. I don't want you to, I want you to blow me. I want you, yeah. I, I want, I want you to, I want to sit on your face. That's what I want. <laughs> and you're like, Okay, you're killing me, and please listen. Stop. I gotta do my jokes. I don't have time to sit on your face. Listen, can we just go to breakfast? That's right. <laughs> I had to say that to a club owner. That's how we have to negotiate. Yeah, the, the club owner. He said, "Uh, uh, where where was I? I think it was in Tulsa <laughs> or something like that." He was like, "Hey, yeah, we're all gonna go get uh late night breakfast." And I said, "Oh, cool." And then we talked, and I said, "Are we gonna go get it?" And he said. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to need you uh, to sit on my face. And I said, oh. can we just go get breakfast? And I didn't say anything. And none of the other, you know, all the other dudes, none of them, you know, like one of them's a dick who laughed. One of them is trying to get work, so he laughed. The other three are just going, oh, Jesus Christ. And, uh, and I'm like, can we just... Can we just go get breakfast? And so it's relatively exhausting. And I never really... Exhausting. I never thought of it as, I always thought of it just as stand-up. I didn't really think of it as sexism. I mm -hmm. just thought of it as the job, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and I was like, there's no way women are have this problem who are, have other jobs. And then you talk to every woman in every fucking job, and there's some tool bag who is making some disgusting joke at her. And she's like, we sell insurance. <laughs> Why do you think that that's what you take away? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why is your dick out, Tubin? Right? We're trying to, we're trying to, we sell, we sell life insurance. People are right. dying and you have your dick on my desk. We're, we, we work at a pet shop. What the fuck? <laughs> you know? I mean, it's, it's, they got their dick in your ear and you're like, it's, listen, it's every I'm trying job. To sell turtles here. Yeah. It's just, it's every fucking job, which is so interesting to me because I thought it was just stand up. And it no, turns out it just said, reminds me of my time in advertising. Yeah, everybody, all, I'm telling you. And the other thing is they kept us isolated. You said that. They kept the women isolated so that we couldn't come together, so that we couldn't be like, oh, it happens to you too. Oh, it happens to you too. Oh, wait a minute. What? It's happening to everybody? So I, so I want to finish about Mitzi. So I go to Mitzi's. The guy hugs me. I was like, he doesn't even give a fuck. He has no shame in his game whatsoever. And I go into the Mitzi's, Mitzi's uh, memorial service, and Byron Allen J.J. Walker, they all get on stage. You should have heard the way they were talking about women. You should have fucking heard. Mitzi Shaw did more for women than anybody else. J uh, Byron Allen was like, oh, yeah. I, this is what he said. Oh, yeah, I helped. Uh, oh, look at Try Being a Nurse. So uh, uh, Byron Allen goes, oh, I, I helped Mitzi clean out the attic so the women could perform up there. And J.J. Walker was like, this fucking Me Too shit. I don't like this Me Too shit. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. I left. I left. I walked out of that. I, wa I walked out of this. I was like, I'm not listening to this. Mm. Yeah, I walked out of my mother's funeral when her sister came in in robes. Because that's when my mother would have left. Uh, so, and that's when. <laughs> what do you mean robes? Uh, 
Like, like Mitzi would have walked out when you walked out. She would yes. have been like, fuck these people. Yes. <laughs> and so that's what that's when you leave a funeral. If yes. when you leave a funeral is when the dead person would have risen from the dead if they could and fucked off. I did it in uh, honor of her. I was like, fuck <laughs> you. I'm not going to sit here and be complicit to these guys being sexist at the woman who helped all women do stand up. She, she was so great to me and them. She helped them. Are you kidding me? She was such an amazing, like, she gave so many comics their start and, and was so supportive until she got super old and weird. But, you know, I mean. We're all going to get super old and weird. But, exactly. okay, so, so you want to talk about women getting together. So one night I walked into the laugh, I mean, into the com comedy store. Now, mind you, I was passing all the Laugh Factory comedy store, everything. I had my own TV show on Fox. I was, like, one of the youngest only women to ever do this. I walked into the comedy store. Joe Rogan was going up after me. I get on stage, I do my, I kill. Joe Rogan goes up after me. He is so vile to me. No, Jackie, so vile that I, still to this day, I can still feel it in my body how vile he was to me when I got off stage. I remember just thinking, why was he so fucking disgustingly vile after I got off? He's like, fuck, would you want to fuck her with that fucking accent? Fuck you, fuck her, fuck you, fuck her. And I remember leaving there shaking inside like, what, what, that's, even the, the so, normal shit we so get. It's so weird when, when comics come up. Because the thing is, when you... It's, it's, it's essentially... Um, it's essentially rebuttal time. But it can, also, and it can also be used like that, where it isn't cool. Where you're just like, oh, I get to say that I would never fuck that. Or I get to say that I would... I, who, who wants to hear some cunt talking out of her ass or whatever? But you know, that's how they like, minimize us, too. As soon as we get off stage, they could minimize us. Right, right? they yeah. spend a, like a minute. Like the shittiest comics in the world, that's a shitty comic behavior, is to get up and spend the first 30 seconds or minute of your set to put down the comic that came before. That is such an abuse of, of give me that. T I, I got jokes to do. You fucking mm -hmm. asshole. What you you want to talk about? I could have done another minute. Um, you're an idiot. And the only time I've ever done anything like that is when it was someone saying something so terrible. Yeah. Like right. they were either racist or sexist right. or just super weirdly mean. Mm -hmm. Where I'm just like I had nothing to do with Joe. Nothing. I had nothing to even do with it. And so but that what I'm gonna say, so when women get together. So I always remember that night. I always remember how vicious, because it wasn't even just the normal fucking how they shit on us when we get off stage. This was vile. This went yeah. right through me. Yeah. So then I see Christy Miller. I meet her on, on the platform in Manhattan. I had never really met her before. I didn't know who she was. And uh, she was with another comic in New York. And she's like, Sue Costello. She's like, I remember you. There's a night when I was new at the comedy store. She goes, and I was in the back. And Joe Rogan had all the guys in a huddle. And they were talking so viciously about you. She goes, I remember it hit me so deeply. And I was like, fuck. I'm like, that's the same night that he went on stage and did it to me. So he affected her and he affected me. And we never even knew. Yeah. Uh, being so vile. Here's the good news. Here's the good news is that there's so many uh, newer, younger uh, comics coming up. A lot of women. This has been one of the coolest things in the last 15 years of me watching comics coming up. Is that there's always enough. There's almost always now another woman in the room that you can make eye contact yes. with and go, yes. what the fuck just, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was, I was, I did some show with Beth Stelling and, and it was just guys just bouncing their balls around, you know, for no reason. And, and it got a little mean, it got a little weird. And I was psyched because I could look at Beth Stelling and go, did you, did you, and I got to make eye contact with another woman comic in a room with a bunch of cool dudes making shitty jokes uh, that didn't make any sense. Because uh, you were like, and she looked at me, she said, I will always make eye contact with you, Jackie. We could always make fun of these fuckwits. <laughs> and I was like, let's do it. Yeah, because we're just trying to do our job. It's like, we're just, and I keep saying that. I'm like, we, this is not complicated. We just want to get paid right. And we just don't want to get not fucking attacked. Oh, you keep freezing sometimes. Go ahead. What'd you say, Jackie? Stand up. That's all I want to do. We just want to do our jokes and be funny, right? Without yeah. being attacked. It's so insane, right? Yeah. And so uh, there were a couple other things I want to, because I remember you tweeting one day. There's a lot been going on. There's a lot of guys that have been sex with the sex stuff. I had to go on stage the night that Louis' article came out. That was fucking another horrific, terrifying. I don't think people realize how terrifying 
being a woman comic is sometimes. I had to go on stage in, in Manhattan the night the Louise story broke, and the women in the audience attacked me. I didn't even know how to handle it. I was like, I don't even know what to do. This is so insane. And again, the guys with their sex stories hijacking the, the narrative. It's always about the guys, right? It's always about the guys. It's like, I'm trying to do my stand-up. Now I got a face that Louis, because the detention in the room was crazy. And I remember I, I went, I, instead of going after Louis, I went after the women from the New York Times who came to me. They came to me like looking for a story about Louis. And so I was joking about how they, how they were so like had had it forever that they were ready to get somebody, some new blood or something. And this girl in the front row was like, fuck you. He fucking did. And I was like, oh, my God, now the women are attacking the women. And I'm like, people don't even realize how much this damage of this behavior by the men has caused us, our, our creativity. We're not even involved in it. Right. I know that when it all came out, I was like, what happened? What did he? I mean, the thing is, is I'm never, I'm never surprised. No. It's, it's like, am I going to be surprised that Bill Clinton got a blowjob in the White House? No. It's not, I wasn't surprised in 95 or whenever the fuck it happened. I was like, of course he did. This is, it's, it's absolute power, you know, and I mean, and I know like all of the men that I know that I hang out with on purpose, by the way, are decent men. Yeah. Like I stopped hanging yeah. out with shit bags yes. a long time ago. <laughs> right? No more shit bags. Right. If I have to work with them, that's someone I have to work with, you know, mm -hmm. but, and, and I can recognize them from mm -hmm. 60 feet. Yeah. I'm just like, Oh, look at that fucking elbow squeezer. Mm -hmm. uh, try not to get too close to that guys. Cause he's going to be handsy. And, uh, you know, and uh, I, I can't, I, you know, Oh, look how funny this fucking piece of shit's going to be. And I can tell, I mean, I, you know, it helps. It genuinely helps to be a hundred years old, but um, <laughs> to have been through so much that you're like, whatever. Right. And, but it is kind of interesting to tell these stories to the younger comics, mm -hmm. both the men and women will literally will sit there and go, what the, f what yeah. happened? You tolerated what? Mm -hmm. And then you're like, wait, yeah, you're right. You're right. That's that's banal. I don't know why I sat there. Because it was all in the dark and it was never out. And you couldn't say it out loud or you would not be able to work. That's the fact. You could not say it out loud. And I know they're saying you tolerated what, but it's still going. It's still going on. They might say you tolerated what, but there's still a lot well, of shit going on. It's still happening yeah. for sure. And, um, but it's like, but I like, I like that there's more. Yes. I think there has been progress. Absolutely. Thank yeah. God for the Me Too movement. When I, my deal with CBS, the way I handled what went on with CBS, I never would have been able to do if the Me Too movement didn't come in. I wouldn't have been able to do the business that I did, but the, the, the aggressiveness and the bad treatment of women, like I started the show saying, it always comes full circle. It was a woman's movement, and then it went back. Then it was the Black Lives Matter, and it went back. It's going to be a class thing now. There's going to be some sort of general strike because people have fucking had it, and they've been divided and conquering it conquering us and eventually we're going to find the common ground because it's the only thing that's going to ha happen to even save humanity is my my feeling i think people have had it with so much disgusting shit coming out that they're like okay I, and i don't think they would have ever been ready to hear anything but because we went all the way i always say like reality tv was created to make false fights like to make it look like it's real but it was caused to cause fights and now we're living in a reality tv show that's what's happening Whatever you create, like like uh, the lightsabers became lasers. Like that's what happens. Whatever you can imagine becomes reality. Right, and so right. now, and we all bought it. We liked watching it. it. Made us feel better about ourselves. Oh, look how fucked up they are. Look at. But now we're like, okay, no, 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 no. It's too far gone. Right. I mean, we, we all we all loved all those bad guys, and all those shitty people on those reality shows. And now, and I mean, the good news about the sort of the election and because. You know, every rock is turned over. And so more of both groups voted this time. Mm -hmm. Like more shitty people than ever voted. Yeah. And they were like, we didn't win. And you're like, no, because it turns out there are more not shitty people. And it's not, you know, it's, it's, uh, civilization is so fucking slow. Yeah. You know, it moves. This, this is as long as your internet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's happening with like, you keep, you keep civilization, civilization moves as slow as Jackie Cage's internet. Yeah, I can't tell if it's your internet or my internet, but uh, why am I freezing? Free yeah, you're freezing too. So, oh, I am. Yep, it's hmm. here's the thing about Instagram I can't 
uh, I can't use the Ethernet cable I do on my on my laptop. So um, oh, so maybe it is not. It they my... just called me if I wanted to get speedier internet, but isn't that what's going to kill us? The five G? <laughs> no. Uh, I'll tell you something. This planet really wants us dead, and I am yeah. sympathetic but not supportive. Um, Good. So, but the I think that the um, I think that just civilization is just super slow, and it's just it's it's going to go the pace that it. I mean, the reason why everyone is so, I, what, I mean, I just, I want, I know what my job is yes. as this weird ass middle-aged white lady. And it's to confront meaner, stupider white people. That's my job. That's my whole job in life. If I want to be some part of the solution right. and, and I don't want to do it because I'm scared and I'm a huge crystal clutcher of a peacenik. Right? Yeah. Back in the 80s, I used to say Nicaragua. I've been insufferable for decades. Anyway, so, but, I, but I'm willing to do it because that's the job. And I've always okay. been willing to do the job. But that's what I'm saying. You're a hard worker. Art Levine, he, I mean, he has so much praise for you from the second this pandemic. And you, you started your comedy. I mean, you, there's, I don't know if there's anybody that works as hard as you taught me that, Jackie. I, I don't know if there's anybody who works as hard as you do. I mean, I think there are, but I think that uh, but you but do I work that hard. I work pretty hard. I work I, really hard too. Yeah, we're but. yeah, we're all. I mean, it is interesting seeing the people that are working really hard, and then I look at the people that aren't that can't face it. Right? They're just like there's two. For me, there's two kinds of people who aren't doing sort of internet shows, and there are people who are they like. They need the live. They're not doing stand up to work on the material. They're doing stand up for the human connection. Right. And if you need that, I mean, I, I don't care if anybody does it, except for when they start getting insulting. They're like, Zoom shows aren't real shows. And I was like, Have you ever done Minot, North Dakota? Arguably also not a real show. But uh, so, but the th I mean, it's as real as it's just a different venue, right? Doing, doing online yeah. shows. And, and it is what's what we have now. I mean, I remember Kevin being on Kevin Brennan's show when this all started. And I was like, it's going to take on a new form. Kevin's like, comedy's dead. I'm like, no, it's just going to take on a new form for the people that are going to be innovative. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. And guess who's being innovative? The women right. comics, because we've been taking shit. We're like, oh, my God, we don't have to go to a club and get a dick smacked in our face. <laughs> right, right. If I can, if, if uh, you know, I do this show every Sunday, I'm working on my album, right? Mm -hmm. And so I do anywhere between 30 and 40 minutes and, and I, you know, and the stuff is tightened up, but it's good when I record, cause I don't want to, I don't want to record on zoom. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to record in a live audience cause it sounds better. Mm -hmm. I could do a studio album. That'd be all Mitch Hedberg of me, but mm -hmm. I don't want to do that either. But the, the crazy thing is there was a guy who did do a zoom album in the last 10 months, a guy named Nori Davis. Mm -hmm. He did his whole album on Zoom and released it. And I think it was with a label. I think it was with 800 Brown Gorilla. And I, there's part of me that's like, ah, because I'm sick of this material. Yeah. Or, or at least the early part of it. The first, right. the first 20 that I wrote three years ago that's super tight. It's done. Would that it were on an album so I could just do it when I needed to pull something out of the air and go to the vault for some reason because mm -hmm. i've i've got an hour and a half of material right now and 15 of it needs work how are you going to work on it what are you going to do i do the zoom shows i work yeah. on it. Yeah. yeah and then and it, it, you know what's interesting the 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 loss of the immediate laughter is probably making us stronger because yeah. I can get away with murder with a facial expression when there's an audience i can get away with a lot with my body movements but when i don't have that you have to just really, really have the material. You have to really. Well, the Zoom shows have at least, uh, they're anywhere between 30 and like 60 people normally. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and usually about 20 of them are unmuted. So I get the laugh. Somebody froze. Anyway, so, but the timing is going to be sorry, different. It's going to be so different from when doing Zoom shows because you know how when you do a theater, you gotta wait mm -hmm. for the you gotta wait for the premise to hit the yes, wall it, roll back. and then it goes. People don't understand that. If you're doing a big if you do comedy clubs, the reason why you're seated so close together, everybody, is because that makes the laughter 
flow. It, it's contagious. It, so the energy is contagious. That's why they cram you together. That's why they keep it cold. So that it's easier to laugh when you're cold. Low so you're more ceiling. awake. Low ceiling. Low ceiling. Low ceiling. 200 people, you can get to the back, you can get to the last row a lot faster in a comedy club than you can in a 1200 seater or a 7000 seater, right? Because you so, have to wait for the laughs to go all the way back. So your timing is much different. You have to wait and you have to kind of guess in a way, right? Yeah. 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 And so with Zoom, there's no bottom to the fucking internet. And right. so you, the timing is slightly different. And so when I go back to doing these jokes, which uh, in many cases are done, I'm going to have to retinker with all the timing again. Because mm -hmm. it'll yeah. live, a live audience. But that's what you're doing as a woman. We're used to do. We have to retinker everything. You have to deal with like, can we just go to breakfast? We're so used to it. So there's a, there's a, there's a self, uh, efficient we're very self-efficient now because we, we've already been doing it we've had to do it against the grain so much we've had to do that and somebody just wrote it always comes back to the women i keep thinking about that world war one when the men went to war the women went into the workplace and got raised for the men for their money and then they left this time we're not leaving this time we're not leaving world war I don't, yeah. huh it was world, world, war, II. Two. Sorry, world war ii yes. that this time we're not leaving Right? No, no. Right, before, we have four minutes left before it, it, it's going to end, so I don't want it to end. But I have a question. I have one question. For, I have two questions for you. I want to know. I've seen you tweet about looks being judged on your looks. This is a very big thing. You can hear the audience on on Norm's album. I need to ask how they did that. Okay, good. Um, I want to know. You've written on Twitter hilarious stuff about your looks, I, and why would it's so crazy that we're female comments to judge so much on our looks? Like I said, like we started the show, saying we're close up now. I can't, uh, I can't, I, I don't really talk about my looks too much just because, because uh, I don't, there's nothing, there's nothing I can do about it. No, I'm saying were you ever judged on, didn't you write on Twitter a little bit about being judged about your looks, no? No, no, but the thing, I'm sure I was, are you kidding mm -hmm. me? How can you not be? First of all, it's show business, so we're all judged on our looks. We're women, so we get judged on you better fucking be hot. And then, uh, and the third thing is, and then we don't know what hot is. And then and, we're like, what's hot? Is that hot? That's not hot. I don't know what's hot. And then your age thing, you're like, we have one second. Like you're too young. You're too young. And then you're like, you're too old. And you're like, I had five minutes. I had five good minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you missed that five true. minutes, you fucked. I know. I know. All right. So this is my last question before we end. You guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm doing this every week. I'll have you back, Jackie. I loved it. I want to keep talking about all the, the, the craft of stand-up, because this is a good way for us to be able to just do it without anybody, no man or nobody, just us talking about what it's like, what it's like, and then to, to show how hard you work and that you're a craftsman, a craftswoman. Oh. Whatever, whatever your pronoun is. Um, uh, it's a she, her. I'm a she, her. Yeah, she, oh, the rogue tooth. Yeah. Uh, oh, I think I must have asked that. If I, uh, oh, yeah. Remember that? Yes, yeah, I Jack, That was really funny. You, what happened? It fell out, and you put it up. That's hilarious. No, no. It's, uh, it's. I think I used to suck my my thumb, and it turned the tooth. Oh yeah. So it's fine. It's um, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I might uh, just to have all of them removed, and then just put in perfect teeth. That'd be great. There you go. So who's got thirty grand? Just someone write me a check. You okay. might get if you keep doing your Zoom shows. Sure. All right, here's my last question. Okay. I want to know what woman inspired you throughout your lifetime. You just name anyone, and I want to know why. Oh, my God. What woman inspired me? Uh, Vanda Michalowski, Vanda Michaels, was the wow. first woman comic I ever worked with. She wrote me a uh, how to do stand-up, how to be a zen comic. It's on my website, JackieCation.com, because I typed it out. and it's But her handwriting framed in my bathroom, how to be a zen comic. And because she was like, don't forget to have fun. Uh, don't forget to, um, to to not judge yourself too hard and uh, and try to make everything personal. Try to make all your material personal. She, it was the greatest advice about stand-up comedy in the world. How to be a Zen comic uh, on my website. Vanda Michaels, uh, whose real name is Michalowski. Amazing. Okay, so tell everybody where they can find you. JackieCation.com. Don't you? Uh, at Jackie Cation and Jackie. Oh, hold on. Say it again. Say it again. At Jackie Cation and JackieCation.com. Everywhere. Oh, and, and same thing on Instagram and everything? All of it, yeah. And what about you and Laura? Are you still doing your show or you put that yeah. on hold for a second? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got two podcasts, The Dork Forest, 
Yes, Where I Dorian love that. Davis was on the Dork Forest. You were on the Dork Forest. I was. I loved um, it. Remember we did the live one with TJ Miller? Remember how yeah. hard we laughed that time? Oh, my God, that was hilarious. And then, um, and then uh, Jackie and Lori's show is just Lori and I bitch and celebrate stand-up comedy every week on a Monday. Amazing. All right. Well, thank you, Jackie. I miss you desperately. Yeah, I miss you too, friend. You take care, Keep okay? Up. Keep up the good work. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Bye.